نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يحسهما فلا يدل إلا نفسه أما بعد فقال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال عز وجل إنما صدق صدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها والمعلقة القلوب قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين في وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم رب شحر صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد الأقدة من لسان يفتر قول آمين Let me start by asking the question, how do we know in Islamic law that zakat is fard? How do we know it's fard? The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Bunya Islamu ala khamsin, shahadatu an la ilaha illallahu wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa iqami salatu wa ita'i zakati wa sawmi wa radhani this is Jumla Khabriya. There's no hukam in it. It's Islam is built on these five things. But there is you don't find in this hook in this hadith is quoted a lot that the five pillars of Islam. But how do we know from a legal perspective that zakat is mandatory? That is ayah number sixty. Of Surah Tawba, where Allah says, "Farida tum min Allah, farida far, farida tum min Allah." After mentioning the categories of zakat, and starting with inna ma sadaqa. Now, sadaqa is a very interesting word. Generally, in Quran, when the word sadaqa is used, it means obligatory giving. In Quran, when the word sadaqa is used, it means an obligation you have to give. For example, the mahab is also called in the Quran, sadaqah, sadaqah inna. They're the women, they're sadaqah, it's the mahab. In the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when the word sadaqah is used, it is used in both, in any giving sense. The Prophet ﷺ said, sadaqah al burhan. Sadaqah is burhan, it is proof that your heart is in the right direction, in the direction that you're giving for the cause of Allah. So, zakat, even though was being mentioned in the Makki Quran, like Surah Luqman mentioned, in other places mentioned, about nine times in the Makki Quran, the word zakat is mentioned. But zakat was made far, according to, there's some different opinion of exactly when zakat was made far. But these ayat and other ayat that seem to make zakat fard were made, came down around the fifth year of the Prophet ﷺ being in Medina. Some scholars say in the ninth year, this also seems ma'ul in a sense that it seems logical that this was the first time the Prophet actually sent wa'amilina alayha, the people that work on zakat, they went for the first time to actually collect the zakat. That was in year number nine. However, it seems like at least from year number five, the Prophet ﷺ had started encouraging the people to give zakat, but then the government was fully involved in taking zakat from the people by the time it was year number nine. And then you remember the famous hadith, which is very beautiful. Uh, I won't discuss that today, actually, that hadith, because it's a little bit long, but that is when the Prophet ﷺ sent one of his companions to Yemen, and uh, he, there, there's a whole hadith on that, but I'm going to just... So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Now, the difference between zakat and sadaqah. Unfortunately, we don't see it today because we don't have an Islamic government. You see, you give sadaqah to any poor person. It seems as the same as zakat you give to any poor person. 
And this is one of the biggest misconceptions. We think zakat is poor due. This is not true. I will show, show you the categories of zakat. Not all of them have to do with the poor people. You can divide zakat into two categories. There's foreign policy in it. Like for example, captives. Or muallafatul people that are inclined towards Islam. Or there is the health, the welfare of the poor. So these two are the main categories. I will discuss this in detail. But what I wanted to share with you is that if you live in the time of Abu Bakr, for example, you say, I gave my zakat. The people of zakat come to your house and you say, because zakat goes to Baytul Mad. And even though you're giving a little bit of amount, but if everyone's giving, then that ends up being a large number. And by the way, the jurists agree that zakat, you can add tax to zakat to meet the requirements of zakat. Meaning if, like we read normally about Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he, uh, you know, he, there was no more poor people in his time, and then he helped people get married, even though uh, that was not necessary from a fiqhi, I won't go into this right now. But then he also helped people in their debts, so, like this, if zakat helps everyone, and everyone's good, that's fine. But if zakat doesn't meet the requirements that the legislation or the amir of the Islamic State sees, then he can add tax to that, and that will be added to zakat. Meaning you have to meet the requirements of zakat for the community, but 2.5% is the give, given from divine ordinance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, so you can think of it like this, that 2.5% is there. But then the Supreme Court can decide, the Supreme Court of the Islamic State, the Sharia Court can decide, well, we have to help the poor. That's the objective of giving the zakat. So therefore, we have to levy this much tax more on the people that have more than the nisab there in order to meet the requirements that we have for the purpose of zakat. Anyway, this is a secondary issue. I would say that if someone comes, if the amilina alayha come to your house, knock on your door, the people that are working for getting zakat, you knock on your door, and you say, oh, I already gave zakat. It will not be accepted. Because you have to give zakat to Baytul Mal. Then Baytul Mal, where all the money is there, it will be decided by the, uh, the structure of the state, that where that money now should go, does it need it more for the welfare, or if welfare is good, do we need it for foreign policy, how the money should be distributed amongst the people, then that, is not just you know giving two dollars, three dollars, or ten dollars, or hundred dollars, little by little. This is that is individual. That is voluntary. Sadaqa, the normal sense of the word when we say sadaqa, is voluntary. You give somebody fifty dollars, hundred dollars. This is above and beyond zakat. This is above and beyond zakat, and it's your individual giving. Zakat is our collective giving. One of the problems that we face is that in our inability to have a collective giving. Because we're still giving individually, which makes our assets not as effective, meaning the way we spend our assets are not as effective. If you have all the money in Baytul Mal, and, and all the money from all the people are in Baytul Mal, then they can use that lump sum for something that's productive and final, you know? Like for example, you know, there's a, a, an example I'll give you. There was a man that was going by the bridge and he saw children drowning. So one man said, oh, okay, let me jump in and help the drowning children. But the other man that was with him, he kept walking. So he is in the water helping the people stopping from drowning. He goes to the other person, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to find that person who's throwing the kids in the water. Meaning there is a temporary solution and there's a permanent solution. So with zakat, this is actually an important issue. If you look at Umar bin Abdul Aziz, when the poor poverty was eradicated, when people that were in debt, their debts were paid, that was not a temporary issue. That was not a temporary bandage to the solution. The purpose of sadaqah is, yes, if it's temporary, one day, two days, money for one month, two months, okay. But the purpose of zakat is to eradicate the issue from the from the very uh, from the very foundation of having that problem. This is the difference. Now, so, okay, then the other thing that I want to mention is that, so in the Khilafah, so one of the problems that we have nowadays, even though we're giving zakat, 
as a faridatun min Allah, as a farida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though we're giving zakat, but it is not as effective and as functional because we're not able to add our money together. If we had something, for example, where all the localities of the masjid at least gathered some of, and by the way, you should try to give zakat in at least some or more than one category of zakat. It shouldn't only be للفقراء والمساكين and I will explain the difference here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا إِنَّمَا this ayah, this part of the ayah is what we call hasab. Like, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَةِ Indeed, actions are, meaning actions are only by intention. إِنَّمَا means only. Meaning this is something that's hasab. It's making it like a command, but it's not fully a command yet. But because after this, فَرِيدَةٌ مِنَ Allah comes, it makes it a stronger command. So, the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا صَدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ So, sadaqa, the first category is fuqara. Now, fuqara are of two types. I'm going to try to do this quickly. I don't want to go into too much detail. Fuqara are the people. Now, by the way, very important. Like I said, on top of zakat, the Islamic government can add tax to meet the goals of the zakat. And if you individually, this is why, by the way, I just want to explain this quickly. When, when they, people denied giving zakat to Abu Bakr, they didn't say, they didn't say we're not going to give zakat. We are not just willing to give zakat to you, the government. So when, this is a very important issue. You know the issue that happened after the Prophet ﷺ where people said, we're not willing to give zakat. And then Abu Bakr did jihad against them. Even though, they didn't say we're not going to give zakat. They said, we don't want to give zakat to you. This is a very important point. Because the whole point of zakat, as I mentioned earlier, was to gather the, the assets of the Muslims to one place, Baytul Mal, and then have a wholesome effect. <coughs> like in the time of Umar bin Abdul Aziz when poverty was eradicated. I already mentioned. So again, this, I just want this to be clear. If the Amilina alayha, they come to your door and knock on your door, and you open the door, the people that are working on zakat, they come to your door and they say, you need to give zakat, and you're like, I already gave zakat, it won't be accepted. They're still going to look into your assets and your bank statements and take zakat, because that which you give individually is sadaqah, the normal word sadaqah. So, this is actually, this difference we don't see nowadays, because our zakat goes just like sadaqah goes. It goes individually with a small amount of sum for some cause, and we're all dispersed in where we're giving our assets. The whole purpose of zakat is to combine the assets and then disperse the funds accordingly. And then the word sadaqah is your volunteer, is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give it as much as you want. Anyway, let me continue from here. The sadaqah, uh, or I mean zakat, which is also sadaqah, because sadaqah is the Quranic term for zakat. Um, Now, the next thing I want to share with you is this. إِنَّمَا صَدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ Indeed, sadaqa is for the fuqara. Who are the fuqara? Now, these terminologies, fuqara, masakin, the scholars have disagreed with. I'm just going to give you an overview. My purpose of sharing this with you is for you to get an overview. Fuqara, fuqara are those people who have, who, who don't have but they don't ask. They don't, they, they, don't, they don't have, but they don't ask. This is just like, فُقَرَاءَ الَّذِينَ أُحْصِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Allah says about them, لَا يَسْأَلُونَ النَّاسَ إِلْحَافَةً Those people who are in the cause of Allah, those people that are working in the cause of Allah, they work. because you know what happens is, and I'll share this with you, it's very interesting. I don't know if a lot of you know that this is what happens. With a lot of people, with a lot of scholars of Islam, and a lot of people that are sincere towards Islam. Zakir Naik is an example of this. Person. You have your business, or you have your medical profession, and your Islamic work, let's say you're doing Islamic work four hours, you're doing your medical profession eight hours. You're doing your business eight hours, you're doing Islamic work four hours. But as you continue, then there comes a point where you have to decide. Am I going to give time to Islam, or am I going to give time to my practice? or my business. You have to decide. When that decision comes, 
that maybe the person that was earning a hundred thousand dollars now all of a sudden within a day he's only earning uh, thirty thousand dollars a year, forty thousand dollars a year. You know, so there are people that make decisions like that, but some of them may need funds. It's the responsibility of the Muslim community to find them. Anyway, um, now. What are the categories of zakat? And this is to make clear that the biggest misconception of the idea of zakat is that it's poor you. It's not poor you. It is not for the poor only. There are nine categories of zakat and the scholars of Islam say you should contribute to each of the categories of zakat if you can. And that was a recommendation for the Islamic government of those times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنَّمَا صَدَقَاتٌ لِلْفُقَرَاءَ So fuqara are those people who don't ask, but they need, they need it. What masakin? Now this term is very interesting, masakin. Second category. First is fuqara. Second is masakin. Masakin are the maskana. وَذُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الذِّنَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَ You have the ability to do something, but you're psychologically unable to do it. This is maskana. And this is very interesting because studies show that with poverty is linked to mental illness. Maybe a lot of the doctors know this. Poverty and mental illness are interrelated with one another. When you're poor, it comes with the effects. How do people become homeless? How do they lose all their wealth? Something sometimes happens psychologically to cause this situation. And so, maskana is a very suitable term actually. Innama sadaqatu lil fuqara'a wal masakin. Those people, they may look well bodied, they may look strong. The other meaning of sadaqah is those people that ask. Those people that are actually asking, we need help. Even though they may be well, uh, they may have physical strength, but they're psychologically, you know, they're people, they can't keep jobs. They keep two month job, then they lose the job. Then they keep another one month job, and then they don't like the boss anymore. So they have this type of psychological, you can say, handy, they're handicapped psychologically. That's the term that's used. They're psychologically handicapped, they can't continue. So for those people that are psychologically handicapped, and as I said, poverty and mental disease are interrelated with one another. This is discussed in this ayah. It's very, very profound. Very profound. Because if you think of Bayt al-Mal, how Bayt al-Mal will be able to tackle this issue at a collective level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا صَدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءَ الْمَسَاكِينَ وَعَابِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا This is also very profound. وَعَابِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا You know you have a department in a government. You have a department in the government. So it needs funding. The government needs funding to do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the Institute of Zakat self-funded. Meaning there's no ever overhead on part of the government. Because the zakat also goes to those people that are going to be collecting the, the, the zakat. Collectors themselves are paid from the money of zakat. And they should be paid well so they don't steal. You know, their salary should be good enough so that they're not inclined to steal it. Because if they're going to pay them very poorly, then they're going to see all that money and then, you know, things go wrong. And trust me, there are horrifying stories of a lot of the uh, relief organizations and, and other organizations that take in money in the Muslim community. And sometimes what happens with them anyway, I'm not going into that. But you should pay وَعَمِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا good money so they don't feel. And this is actually not for me. This is a hadith of the Prophet So, first two, first two categories have to do with the welfare of the society. The most needy people in society, the money should go. And over here, let me also explain something very important economically. And you know, I'm sure you're all aware of uh, the Republican-Democrat debate over trickle-down theory versus the uh, versus the socialist welfare. Uh, so this is like the two dichotomy, but Islam combines the two. Let me explain what I'm saying. Again, I don't have time. Maybe I'll have to give a second khutbah on zakat. Uh, but one is one idea of the economy, which is called trickle-down theory, which is that if the businesses do well, what will happen? If the businesses do well, what will happen? If the businesses do well, they'll hire others. When the businesses are doing well, they'll hire others that will make everyone go up. <coughs> this is the trickle down. So you give to the rich, basically. You give to the well-to-do, 
and then from there it'll create jobs and so then it will help everyone in society move upwards. This is there. The second idea is that like the welfare system we have in, in America, but it's abused, totally abused. This welfare system is, it's amazing how abused this system is. The other idea is that you identify the people that are legitimately in need of funds. So every locality would do this. And then the government would support them via this system of zakat. But the other advantage is this. What makes a good economy? This, I want to share this with you. What makes a good economy is the circulation of money. When you take money from the top and give it to the bottom, what are you doing? You're circulating money. This is also one of the advantages of an interest-free free banking system. You see, let me just explain something. If, you, if the economy is going down, if the economy is going down, then what happens? People are scared to invest. They don't want to invest in business because the economy is going down. So the best thing to do is put it in the bank and let it accumulate interest. But the problem with that is all the assets of the people that have the funds get frozen and none of the money comes to the bottom. When you have an interest-free banking system, what happens? The only way to make money, the only way to make money is by investing. You have to invest because it's profit sharing, mudarba and musharaka. So you have to open up some business and then whatever business it is, whatever funds it, so you, it forces people from piling up their money and keeping their money, especially when the economy is going down. Or the other thing happened in the recent housing collapse. When, when they did studies on this, what they found is, is that either people stacked up their money and didn't want to invest anywhere, or because the interest rate, rate, rates go so low, because when the economy is down, they, put the, they go back closer to what Islam wants anyway. But then what happened is people weren't happy with getting 1%, 2%. They, then they were then they were staking their money on higher and more risky propositions, and that lost money. So it was a double. One was the housing collapse that happened, but the other was the assets that existed. They were put in more high risk uh, categories because people were not happy with the the lower interest rates. Anyway, this is a secondary issue. What I'm saying is that the first is fuqara, then masakin, the welfare side. Third, عَلَيْهَا For the self-sufficiency side so that the Islamic State can run the zakat system without, in a, without in adding any overhead to the government itself. Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, Please come forward. Please come forward, please come forward. There's a space over there, please co cover it quickly. Allah says the zakat is due for the fuqara. Number two, one masakin. Number three, wa'amilina alayha. Number four, now foreign policy. Those people whose hearts are inclined towards Muslims and Islam. Now this has different categories. In the time of Umar the Allah one, this was considered people that are well, they are very influential, but they are also influenced by Islam. So I wouldn't say exactly like giving politicians that make false promises to us and giving them just lumps of money and saying, okay, this is our, not like this. Maybe it's something where there's much more raghba than just, you know, like that sheriff that comes to our masjid, for example. That would be a good example of that. And those people whose hearts are inclined towards Muslims and towards Islam. So bringing the people that are near us, more near us. Or the other meaning of this is, you know, sometimes when people accept Islam, majority of the time they're not rich, majority. So when somebody comes, you know, Give him something, you know, even if it's from zakat. Give him something to make him happy, make him feel happy. Please move forward. I can't mention the number of times the Prophet would take poor people and 
part of bringing people into the deen, I mean, we, we, you know, we think, uh, it's amazing how many times the Prophet physically helped the people. Like, for example, the Ashab al-Sufa of the Masjid of the Prophet sallam, where the Masjid, the poor people were living in the Masjid all day. But they were given the job of learning the deen. Since you're here, and okay, you don't ha are not well to do, and you have need some time to stand on your feet, until then, learn Islam. Please move forward, please move forward. If you can move forward, seriously, we need to move forward. <laughs> Next category, Wafirriqab. Now, Firriqab has many meanings, three meanings, and all three are correct. Firriqab, slaves. To free a slave, there's been a contract between the slave and the master and the slave needs a certain amount of money to free himself and he can, he can be freed and he can be on his feet, he doesn't need his master's help after that, you can give him zakat. Number two, وَفِرِّقَاب, people in debt. Somebody's in debt, debt is considered very bad. The Prophet ﷺ used to pray against being in debt and there are du'as of the Prophet to get out of debt. In fact. Let me share with you something. One of the ways that we have been negatively affected in the modern, in, in the age of modernity, is that even we try to look at Sharia in a way that it'll fit uh, the the modern and postmodern, uh, you can say, systems and way of life. What do I mean by that? You can have Sharia financing, for example. You can have a credit card with Sharia financing. They're giving credit cards now with Sharia financing. But the problem is it still encourages you to be in debt. The whole point in Islam is the spirit of Islamic financing is that you shouldn't be in debt. You shouldn't be in debt and you shouldn't want to live in debt. You should be out of debt. That's, you're not re rich, really rich if you're in debt. That's just uh, not really wealth, you know, anyway. So, Wafir Riqab is the next category. Now, who are Fir Riqab? If they are captives of the army, that's foreign policy. If it is slaves and people in debt, then that is welfare. Helping them. Those people. Number next. What does mean? Ghari mean are those people whose debts are more than their assets. Again. Helping everyone, and this is a very important question, you know. I'm going to come to this in a second. Let me just finish this. And this used to, especially in the Hanafi fiqh, there is a very strict opinion on this issue, that this only means the people that are mujahid fi sabilillahi, and then the other two exceptions within, within the Hanafi fiqh is that fi sabilillahi are those people that are going for hajj, but they're stuck for some reason. Or fi sabilillahi is for the students of knowledge meaning they're learning Islam and they're in peace of Allah. These are the three opinions as far as what the category of peace of Allah is in the Hanafi fiqh. However, in the other fiqh, the other fiqh, they have said peace of Allah is open. Open in its broadest sense of the word. Even Imam Shafi accepted because that's how his fiqh was. He always took words in its broadest sense of the words. Like masha means masha. It doesn't have to be one force. Just touch your hair and it's done. So anyway, uh, in its broadest form, Fi Sabilillah can be for da'wah, for example. Fi Sabilillah can be for introducing Islam to non-Muslims, for articulating the message of Islam to the general public, so on and so forth. Then, next category, Wabnis Sabil. And the one who is in a situation, in a dire situation, he's out of his country, he's out of his territory, and he is in a dire situation, or he's even in another country, but he's dying, for example, or he has some disease, or he's in the hospital, or whatever. He's in a situation that's very dire, and he needs help. Zakat can go for him, even if he's outside the country. And you know, it's very, uh, in, in the Sharia, Imam Ghazali writes about this, that it's a very sorry situation when you're dying, and your relatives are not by you. So they deserve special attention. Okay, so these are the categories of Zakat. So some of them have to do with welfare. Some of them have to do with foreign policy. Not, so to call zakat poor due 
is a misunderstanding of the purpose and, and the intent of zakat. Why Allah gave us nine categories? Because in different situations, there are different priorities and different needs. Sometimes, like there are so many Muslim brothers, for example, in Guantanamo Bay, that they're, they're guilt, they have no guilt for being there. But if there was an Islamic State, then the Islamic State would use the zakat money to help the people come out of that, people that are prisoners of war for no reason. People that are not guilty. So anyway, please move forward. There's absolutely like, it seems like we're completely tight. I'm going to take five more minutes and then inshallah we will pray. Let me uh, sit down and then we'll... أقول قول هذا استغفر الله ولا تنسى. إن الحمد لله أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد. Let me just make some points very very quickly. Number one, the zakat should be given. Ideally, should be given to a person to make him self-sufficient. Like in the time of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, when zakat was given, the person was self-sufficient. Some of the fuqaha have allowed to give zakat in a way that doesn't make them self-sufficient. But the spirit of zakat is that you eradicate the problem for once and for all. Ah, I do want to explain this. What is zakat given on? The essence of what zakat is given on was determined by Uthman This is very key to understanding and then inshallah, very quickly inshallah, I'll finish this off. In the time of Uthman, the Islamic empire was growing. He was the richest man in the world. I mean, you can say he was Bill Gates times 10. He funded the Battle of Tabuk. You know the famous hadith where Abu Bakr brought everything he had. Umar brought half of everything he had. But what is usually not mentioned is Uthman funded the whole, basically, you can say the funding of like going against the Roman Empire of that time. The funds of it came from Uthman when He gave sadaqah, he gave like 900 camels, for example. According to another riwayah, I think it was 700 camels. After which the Prophet, I can't go into the details of this, after that the Prophet said, Uthman, after today, whatever you do is, Allah will forgive you because of what you have done. Anyway, Uthman was the richest man in the world, the richest man in the world at that time. But he lived, he lived in poverty, just like, you know, the Prophet ﷺ also never gave zakat in his life. The Prophet never gave zakat because he never had the nisa. Anytime he would get anything, he'd give it away. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, at the time of Uthman ﷺ, and notice how, shout, how intelligent these people were. I don't think I'll have time to finish what I want to say, but I just want to say this part, and then inshallah I'll continue next time. The horses, they're used here for your private use, generally. But at the time of Uthman, when the Islamic Empire was expanding, Uthman then said, he gave a fatwa. And by the way, the fatwa, fatwa of Abu Bakr, the fatwas of Abu Bakr. You should study them. The fatwas of Umar, his fatwas. See the difference, how Abu Bakr gave fatwa. How are they different from the fatwas of Umar? How are they different from the from the fatwas of Uthman? How are they different from the fatwas of Ali? You'll see how time had, because the Islamic State was growing, many fatwas were changing because of this one reason. And sometimes they were different because they honestly disagreed with one another. But anyway, because the Islamic Empire had gotten so big, so now horses, other than your personal horse, horses were now a source of, uh, for, uh, 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 were used in the economy. First, it was your private thing, but then as people started getting more and more horses, 10 horses, 20 horses, they're doing businesses, the empire is expanding. So Uthman one made the fatwa that now you have to give zakat on horses. Just like if you have your personal car, but if you have your business car, for your business car is the asset that if you sold it, by the way, if you have inventory, for example, Inventory you have to give zakat, but how? How will you determine? You'll determine the inventory zakat if you did bulk sale. Like you have all of your inventory here, okay, sell it. What will be the market price? Not on the actual sale and the, the all of, just what is the bulk that you will sell it for? You give zakat on that. Same thing, if you sold your car, business car, your business truck, whatever it is, 
your business merchandise, if you sold it wholesale, meaning wholesale in bulk, not wholesale, in bulk, if you did a public auction, for what will it go? The inventory is done, uh, the zakat on the inventory of your business is on that. But anyway, I was saying that Uthman Ali Allah one, he's, he made the fatwa that you have to give zakat the horse. Why is this significant? Because it made the distinction between what is in use and your personal and what are business assets. Inshallah, I will discuss this next time in more detail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, understand the deen. اللهم تجعل القرآن الربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا اللهم تجعل القرآن الربيع قلوبنا اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم واجعل لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة وردنا تلاوة آناء الليل وطرف النهار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يعمل بالأذن والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون الله يذكركم اذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة